Hi, my name is Dr. Joshua Cohen. I'm a gynecologic oncologist at UCLA Medical Center. In honor of Cervical Health Awareness Month, which is January, I'd like to take the next few minutes to discuss with you what cervical cancer is and what preventative measures that you can take to reduce your risk of cervical cancer. The cervix is part of the uterus. It's the part where when moms have babies, it dilates and babies can travel through the cervix to be delivered. I describe the cervix as part of the uterus the same way that we can think about the state of California. Northern California is the uterus, it's the top part. Southern California is the bottom part, which is the cervix. They are connected and geographically they have some similarities, but they're actually very different. And so when you see your OBGYN, when they do a pap smear, they're testing for precancer cells of the cervix. In this picture, that's the bottom part here. This is the top part of the uterus and the bottom part is the cervix. In the United States, 14,000 women will be diagnosed with cervical cancer this year. And in my opinion, that's too high. There are measures that we can take to reduce your risk of cervical cancer, and we're gonna talk about that next. Uh, unfortunately, this is a disease that uh, affects women both in the US and internationally uh, on a large scale. Cervical cancer is most commonly caused by the human papilloma virus, HPV. There are many different strains of HPV, and 80% of the population will be, uh, will, will be exposed to HPV during their lifetime. Currently, there are 79 million Americans who have HPV, and 14 million people will acquire HPV this year. The HPV vaccine is very important to reduce your risk of cervical cancer, and we'll talk about that, because we know the vast majority of cervical cancers are caused by HPV. The cancer is best prevented when someone receives this vaccine early in life. And if you look at the recommendations from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, that's gonna be between ages 11 and 12. Early detection can be performed with pap smears. And so when you see your OBGYN for an annual visit, usually they'll talk to you about whether you're due for a pap smear. And that's because the pap smear is a good screening method for cervical cancer and precancers of the cervix. There are some rare types of cervical cancer that are not driven by HPV. And that's why I still encourage you to be aware of the symptoms of cervical cancer, which can include irregular bleeding, spotting with intercourse or sex, uh, and new symptoms like pelvic pain. How can we prevent cervical cancer? There are some very basic steps. The most important one is to consider the HPV vaccine. I would encourage everyone who meets criteria to get the HPV vaccine, it's very safe. And as a father, I'm gonna recommend that for my two children when they're of the right age. Uh, the FDA has just approved the HPV vaccine for people up until age 45. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is going to review that recommendation. And if they also agree, insurance companies will now start covering that vaccine up until age 45. Currently, insurance companies are covering the vaccine between ages nine and 26. The other recommendations to prevent cervical cancer uh, would be to reduce smoking if you are smoking or to stop smoking. Smoking is linked to cervical cancer. Also to see your OBGYN for appropriately timed pap smears. Pap smears used to be done every year. We're now spacing that out for patients based on certain criteria, but I would still encourage you to see your OBGYN once a year for an annual exam and discuss with her or him whether you're due for a pap smear and or HPV test. And then lastly, be aware of symptoms. Discuss if you're having bleeding with sex or bleeding between periods. Uh, bring this up with your doctor, whether it's your internal medicine doctor or your OBGYN. Uh, advocate for yourself to make sure that you're, there, are, there are no symptoms that you're ignoring. Uh, we here at UCLA uh, want you to do well. We have a, an entire department of OBGYNs, and if you have any questions or concerns, uh, the information is here to call and make an appointment. We also, like myself, have a group of gynecologic oncologists that specialize in cervical cancer, and we're here and happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you.